Would you please pray with me? Gracious Lord, for having found us among the millions of strain and lost sheep, we give you thanks. You have proven yourself to be mighty indeed and plenteous in mercy, for which we praise and adore you. Now send us your Holy Spirit, that he may guide us in all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text for today is from the Holy Gospel that was read a few minutes ago, the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter, and I would like to read verses 1 through 3 again. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. This is our text. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever lost something? something of significance, and then rejoiced when you found it. Perhaps something really important. We all lose things. I don't know the panic that you have uh, if you've ever lost a cell phone or you've left it behind. You wonder where it is. There's this big panic, and then, at least for me, there's this rejoicing when you find it. A few years ago, about six years ago, I went back to Denver to help my parents uh, begin to move out of the home that they had been in for about 35 years. And my initial job was to uh, take out all the things that I had accumulated over the years, things that were still there, even though I hadn't lived at home or hardly spent any time there in Denver for 35 years. I was amazed at the things that I found, things that I thought were long lost, that uh, were suddenly there right in, in front of me, and I was rejoicing because I can't believe this. Here this is. I thought I lost it. It's, it's right here. But even more importantly, maybe it, was, uh, maybe it was a pet. Maybe it was a favorite animal. And you put it out on Facebook, the name and a description, and even a photograph of your favorite cat or dog. You put up flyers on, out on the, uh, on the mailboxes. The word was out, and when somebody found the dog, maybe you got a call from the Humane Society because they were able to read the chip on your, your favorite pet. And it was found, and you, and you rejoice. When I read this text about the sheep and the coin that were lost and the rejoicing that takes place, it really hits home. It hits home to me because when I was six years old, I was invited from a friend to go over to his house and play after school. Problem was, I hadn't received permission from my parents. I hadn't even told them. It was a spontaneous thing. My friend says, hey, you want to come over to my house after school? I said, sure, I'd love to come over. And we did. His mom greeted us at the door, so glad that her little boy was able to have a friend come over and spend some time playing. We just got lost in time and what we were doing. We were in the basement, we were playing with the cars, we were in the backyard. It was fantastic until school got out at 3.30, but at about 6 o'clock, the mother came outside. It was time for their family to sit down and eat, and she said, Do your parents know you're here? <laughs> and ding, ding, oh, my parents. I totally forgot that I even had any. I was having such a good time. And then this fear, it was like, oh my goodness, am I in big trouble? And she said, you, you need to go home. And This was back in the days before busing and where children were transported everywhere. It was a different world then. And I was probably about six or seven blocks away, but I began to go home. And it was probably about halfway there when I heard a car pull up next to me and the, the, the tires screeched to a halt and it was my uncle. And he jumps out of the car and he says, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Why? <laughs> I'm fine. He says, the whole neighborhood is looking for you. Your grandparents are here. All of your aunts and uncles are here. The neighbors are here. And the police are out looking for you. <laughs> Opened the door and I got in the car and 
suddenly it struck me, uh, would I ever even see the next day? I <laughs> thought I was in big trouble. And I got there, and this was before the day of instant communication, but I'm telling you, within two minutes of pulling into my parents' driveway, all of the neighbors and all of the relatives and even the police were there. And my mother ran up to me, and my dad right behind her. They both embraced me, and what I see so clearly on my face to this day is the sense of relief that she had, the tears in her eyes and flowing down her cheeks. And she said, we were so worried about you. You were lost, but you have been found. And I was relieved, too, because I was going to see the light of the next day. I wasn't spanked. I wasn't grounded. They were just so happy that I was lost, and, and now I was found. And I, I, I never forgot that, by the way. Even at the age of six through the rest of my life, even when I was in college and I would come home at 11 or 12 o'clock at night, I'd still go to their door, knock on the door, and say, I just want to let you know that I'm home. And I think when we put this in the context of this text before us today, there is rejoicing in heaven when that which was lost has been found. And Jesus is, is telling the, uh, not, not just the, 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 those who know that they're sinners that they have been found, but he's telling the Pharisees, the self-righteous ones, he said, you're lost and you don't know it. You need to be found. See, I was lost when I was over at my friend's house playing, totally losing time of the day and losing time completely. I didn't even know it, but my parents were worried about me and so were others. And Jesus is saying to them, Pharisees, you don't even know you're lost, but I care about you too. You're lost, and I am here to find you. If you have ears, listen. In fact, that's how he ended the story from last week. Remember when Jesus was talking about uh, you need to take up your cross and follow me? The last things that he said was, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then today, the very first verse this parable of the lost sheep, he says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear him. He said, If you have ears to hear, hear. And now they are gathered around to hear him. And Jesus is speaking most specifically to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And he has been welcoming sinners. Jesus has been welcoming his sinners. And he is eating with them. And the Pharisees don't like it. They don't like it that Jesus is eating with sinners. Now remember the text from two weeks ago in Luke chapter 14, when Jesus told the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that when they hold a banquet, that they should not just invite their family and friends, but they should also invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Do you remember that? He was talking about a banquet, and when you come into a banquet, don't just take the, uh, the head seat because they might tell you to, the host might tell you to go and sit in the back. He said, instead, sit in the back, and wow, well, you will be honored when he invites you to come up to the front. And by the way, when you have a banquet, don't just invite your rich friends and neighbors. Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Remember that? Well, that's what Jesus is doing today. He's doing exactly what he said he would do. He's sharing a meal with tax collectors and sinners, the spiritually poor, the crippled, the, the lame, and the blind. And the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they don't like it. They don't like it one bit. They don't like it because tax collectors are looked upon as being crooks in the least and as being traitors at the worst because they are Jews collecting taxes from their own Jewish people to support an occupying force, the Romans. No wonder they were looked upon with such disdain. But Jesus is eating with them at table. Pharisees don't like it. They don't like it a single bit. They don't like it because Jesus is eating with sinners, and sinners were tax collectors and prostitutes. In other words, they were people with a reputation. And Jesus was inviting people with the reputation, sinners, to eat with him. 
And the Pharisees are muttering. They are grumbling. The Greek word for mutter is diagogizo. <laughs> they are diagogizoing. Greek word for grumble is gungidzo, with all those gutturals in there as you listen to the word itself. Right, Pastor Nate? You can tell they're not happy. It's just a growl. They're complaining. He's eating with sinners. This man not only welcomes sinners, but he eats with them, they say. And eating with somebody, inviting somebody to sit with you at a table and enjoy a meal with them, it means that there is a relationship with them. And the Pharisees and the, and the teachers of the law can't stand it that Jesus has a relationship with sinners. Because they don't consider themselves to be the sinners. So Jesus hears this muttering and he tells them these three parables, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost boy, and the parable of the lost son. And in the process, Jesus answers every grumbler and every mutterer and he affirms the gospel. He affirms what he had said earlier in Luke in chapter 5 at Matthew's house, Matthew the tax collector, when he said to Matthew, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And now he is fulfilling those very words as he invites sinners to sit at the table with him. And inviting the Pharisees and the tax collector, or the, the, the teachers of the law to sit with him too, but they don't want to have anything to do it because they're too righteous for that. They're too holy for that. And, and so Jesus just, just puts them in their place by telling them this, this parable. You see, muttering over God's mercy doesn't bring any joy in heaven at all. But there is the alternative, and the alternative is to join with the angels in rejoicing in God's mercy through Jesus Christ. And so each one of these parables is also uh, an invitation to rejoice. The sheep is found. The sheep is found, and what happens? Rejoice with me, says the shepherd. The lost coin is found, and rejoice with me, says the woman who lost the coin. The son was lost and is found, and what does the father say? You're going to hear more about this one next week. The parable of the prodigal son. The son is found, and what does the father say? He says, rejoice with me. We rejoice when sinners are found. We rejoice in the fact that you and I, as, as lost sinners, have also been found. That Jesus has called each of us by name, that he, that he knows each of us, that he puts his claim on us, his sheep, because he is our shepherd. And when we were baptized, the, the, the angels in heaven rejoiced when Jesus called us to be a part of his flock. There was rejoicing in heaven. Or perhaps heaven is waiting to rejoice because of you today. This is what Luther wrote. This is what Luther said about this parable. He said, therefore, if you know yourself to be a lost sheep, which has been enticed and led astray by the devil far from the right way, then take to heart this sermon of Christ. For your sake it is preached in order that you may repent that is, that you may be comforted by the Lord Jesus Christ and his grace and be freed from the snares of the devil and become better. Powerful words from Luther about everyone, about all of us. This call to repentance, knowing that we've been lost and we repent and we fall on our knees and fall at the mercy of God. And Jesus puts his arms around us and, and welcomes us, us home. And then there's this rejoicing, this rejoicing in heaven. It's like when I was six years old in my front yard and my parents just embraced me. I was lost, but I was found. and I was sorry. But there was rejoicing. 
My parents held a party in the front yard after, after I was found. And imagine, multiply that a hundred million billion times, the rejoicing with all of the angels in heaven over one sinner who repents and is found. You and I, we are sons and daughters of the Holy One. We are sons and daughters of the very one who died for us, the very one who made payment on the cross for us, paying our sin in full and paying for our sin in his blood. And rather than a deal that we make, repentance is about believing that this gift is ours. It's embracing it. It's taking it to heart. It's, it's, it's living it. It's, it's breathing this gift that our Lord has given to us because no song of joy in heaven has one breath about rewarding the rewardable or correcting the correctable or improving the improvable, which is exactly what the Pharisees and the teachers of the law wanted. But Jesus says, that is not what I am saying. I am telling you that this is not something that you can earn. This is something that I give to you because I love you. This is something that I give to you because I desire to show mercy to you. This is something that I give you as, as a gift of, of love to you. Forgiveness and salvation that comes not because of anything that you do, has nothing to do with your self-righteousness, but has everything to do with what I do in my payment on the cross and my righteousness now given to you. That is the life of the church. And that is what brings us here today to continue rejoicing in this one who has invited all of us to come to his banqueting table. You and me, those of us here today who come crippled and lame and blind and, and, and spiritually poor. That's who we are. And yet Jesus has invited us to sit at his table. And not just to sit at his table, but even to share in this meal. He invites us to share in this meal because this is a relationship now. It's why only believers can come to this table. It's because there is a relationship, because we know that Jesus is really present in this meal. And he comes to us in this meal with the fullness of his forgiveness. And we walk away from having received this meal for the forgiveness of our sins. We walk away rejoicing, knowing that we are forgiven. And knowing that we not only rejoice among ourselves, but we rejoice with all the angels in heaven. Because of this relationship. Brothers and sisters, we were lost, but we have been found. And because we are found, now we want to share this story of God's mercy with others. And the shepherd uses us to reach lost sheep and to reach lost coins and to reach lost sons and daughters today. And the shepherd seeks to use us through the very preaching and the teaching of his word. He uses pastors as his, as his under-shepherds to preach the word and administer the sacraments. But he also uses you, who are a part of the priesthood of all believers, to join with us as, as shepherds to get the word out and to speak to those who are lost, those who need to hear the gospel, and to remind them that they too have a shepherd the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves them and is waiting for them, desiring to welcome them home so that they too can rejoice with all the angels in heaven. May it be so for Jesus' sake. Amen.
and life, and for delivering to us your son, that we may enjoy forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. We rejoice that you have come to us as our shepherd, that we may not be without your guidance and gifts. And we ask you to help us to treasure in our hearts all that you supply for us and for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to our nation wise and honorable leaders, O Lord, that we may be protected by good laws and delivered from injustice, prejudice, and hatred. Bless the members of our armed forces who defend us against our enemies and guide us that we may be good citizens. Bring harmony and concord to the nations, that war and violence may cease and we may work together in the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless the homes of your people, O Lord, that husband and wife may honor their vows of love and fidelity to each other. Unite parents and children in love and affection, that their lives together may be examples to the world of your goodness and love. Bless all those who earnestly desire a home, spouse, or child, that according to your merciful will, these vocations may be provided. Lord and yours, hear our prayer. Bring to the sick and starving the comfort of your grace, that in the days of their afflictions and in the time of their adversity they may know your presence and your healing grace. Be near to those who grieve the loss of loved ones, those to whom death draws near. Today is for we pray especially for Lee Pearson, Jeannie Maggard, June Jenner, Bob Van Ness, and me. We ask all these things, O Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
faithful shepherd, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the world to rescue all the world. We thank you that for his sake you have given us the, the peace of your forgiveness and his table of mercy. Because you never fail your sheep, enable us to share with others the blessings we have received. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Here now, the prophet of Jesus, may this true body and blood of the Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in your body and soul, in your life everlasting. Amen. The benediction of the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift His countenance.